Hello, Bob. How are you doing? Lilo, I'm doing really great today. This is so fantastic to be spending this moment with you. It is, it is timeless. This man is so juicy, you guys. Uh, I'm on the Juicy Living Tour, as you know, and uh, as I was interviewing uh, Larry, Dr. Larry Dosse in yes. Santa Fe, he suggested that I meet you, and what a delight this man is. This is a real treat. You have... Wow had a major awakening in, in 87 or something yes. happened there at, during the harmonic convergence yes, and guess. that transformed your life. It changed everything in a sense what I believed in. I was president and CEO of a wonderful company called Rosewood Hotels. Oh yeah. And um, this, I was working out on the, the island of Hanamaui in, in uh, the island, islands of Hawaii and it was exactly on the harmonic convergence and I was on a sacred hail there um, and something really came into me and that was to work a different way and that way was in a sense using the design of the circle which was really the medicine wheel mm -hmm. in ancient times and looking at everything we do holistically and as a hologram so that our, our decision making is made as a part, as a businessman, but an environmentalist uh, and something I believe there's so much juicy knowledge of the ancient times yeah. and it's, it's in our DNA and we just have to tap into it to look at a consciousness when we're working, as we work internationally mm. especially. So before we get in more details on how you're working now, how were you working before? Well, I was always, uh, when I started this company uh, for Carolyn Rose Hunt in Dallas called Rosewood Resorts and Hotels, uh, Lilo, I was always kind of left of, of the mark in the sense of what I believed was what I learned through living in Asia, being in India, uh, working in Bali and in my design days. Uh, was to be open-hearted and really listen. So when I mean I was left of it, we did a lot of things to build this hotel company that had to do with creating special spaces, frankly sacred space, and understanding the culture, whether it's in the U.S. or elsewhere that Rosewood went, that we would be honored and respectful of that. And, and a lot of um, hoteliers that we were competing against couldn't understand how we came out of the the shoot as they say so fast uh, to build the company and it was really looking at the business in a different way but the real um, we'll call it epiphany occurred is that our greater work was ahead of us <laughs> and uh, when I started downloading this this uh, dream and a downloading new, huh? Yeah, it felt like it felt like when I, especially when I was on this ancient heiau in Hana, the, and understanding the Hana people, the the Hawaiian Hawaiians, it became evident that uh, something transpired there that shifted my life, and that li and I made a decision then that took me about a year and a half that I would take a giant leap of off the cliffs of <laughs> faith and hoping to be caught by the angels that I, I resigned my, my presidency of this company mm. because I really wanted to take this a step further and, and try to touch uh, businesses and the hotel business in a way that uh, those that were in tourism would realize the responsibility we have to preserve culture, to be uh, cognizant of special places we go to because tourism is the second largest economy globally mm -hmm. and we've seen a lot of frankly degradation with it where we yeah. by this growth we push cultures out instead of enjoining them and interconnecting them. From and that's greed. A, yes. From greed and yes. money and and, and just we got to build a Western way. So mm -hmm. I realized that my next life and lo and behold, I had left after two weeks. I didn't know what I was going to do. 
and a wonderful client of ours uh, in Tokyo asked me to redo the um, um, a hotel they bought that was really, really uh, had problems in where God made the golf ball in Scotland called St. Andrew's Old Course Hotel. Oh, yeah. And that immediately gave me a company that didn't exist manifested itself. Why did you choose that particular project? How was it aligned with your vision? Actually, it chose me. I didn't <laughs> go after it. And I, I believe in a philosophy that if a door is open, yeah. if it's all appropriate, and the opportunity to renovate this historical site, it was built in the 70s by British Railway, and frankly, it had no context of where it was located. And so uh, it, it was an opportunity to form my company and also create, regenerate a building and, and restore it. So that's what intrigued me about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a great client, uh, Seo people out of Tokyo. So that started me yeah. on my journey. Uh, and it's, it's really my, my uh, and I want you to know this, Lilo, it's, it's my heart song. Yeah. And clearly. what happened in 87 really was magical, but my whole life has been magical. And as you say, and that's what I love about what you're doing, it's really juicy because I didn't plan anything. Yeah. I didn't say I've got to go here. My dream was to go to Machu Picchu and then I have a client, wonderful client called, uh, um, uh, good Bob, a little jet lag I just got in from Tokyo two days ago, Orient Express Hotels. Yeah. You know, and I worked in Mallorca for them, I worked in Buenos Aires for them, in Cusco, on a very sacred renovation of a 16th century monastery wow. called El Monasterio. And these were all um, my graduate school, my post-postgraduate school, because when the, when the student's ready, the teacher shows up, uh -huh. and I was constantly getting input and meeting very special people doing work in the world just one at a time like a little a pebble in a pond that the ripples go out so this is what started Bob on really this journey of uh, with making and hoping to create sacred places yeah. and bringing them to life because it seems like you're, you're those ha those sacred places are coming to you and kind of presenting themselves and, and so then you enhancing that energy it seems through exactly. your design and sacred geometry and studying tell us how you go about that well first I, I truly believe in the power of creativity is in co-creativity yeah. and for instance my wife Dolores Zimmer heads up the design studio and she's a deep listener and understands sacred space. And then Dolores and I bring a team together, like a project I'll show you in the Bahamas uh, called Papillon. We've done for a new company called Michael, uh, Papillon Resorts uh, for Michael Waters. Uh, we brought together the land planner who's worked for me over 20 years, John Suarez of SBD Studio. Uh, the Fab Studio, wonderful architects, Frank Butler and Sung Chai from Singapore, who's with Frank out of Dallas. Uh, our, our team works, we get into what we term a charrette, and the process is we spend seven to ten days on a site, living on it, being with it, understanding the, the power of that site dowsing it and looking at where water is, where the uh, vortex or electromagnetic lines are, because this tells us how to create resonance mm. in buildings. And people don't quite know why they feel good in the space, mm -hmm. but the, the space is aligned with the magnum of the earth, the heartbeat mm -hmm. of, of the earth, the Divine Mother. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the tools we use and it's really in collaboration mm -hmm. because out of it comes just beautiful work. Mm. It's yeah, kind of like that. bringing a film together yeah. uh, in a sense where you have actors and producers and camera and, and, and I came from the film business originally. My dad was a director, assistant director 
in, in Hollywood. And it, it taught me a lot on how to look at all the parts to the whole, too. That's what I meant when I've been blessed. I've yeah. had these little magical <laughs> spots. This is amazing. And it's not only in real estate, and we can talk a little bit later about that, because you're, you're obviously impacting uh, for private and private residents, resorts, but in, in buildings and work buildings. Yes. And also um, into media. I mean, you have so many ideas and so much uh, knowledge and information to share, all based on this holistic point of view. And your life also yes. is holistic. We, we live that world. And all in residence with the this, this life force and so that our soul really your mission is is to it feels to me like it's to allow the soul to really be at ease and be and 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 just uh, uh, so that we can open our hearts and, and be who we really are I mean what a gift this is to the uh, th world. this is this has been uh, my life's work some people have said Bob why don't you retire and and I say my friends, this is a heart song and I believe that we can live way beyond the years and the wisdom we have as, as, uh, as we, what they, the native peoples of the world call the elders. And so uh, the work we do is, is what makes our heart beat because it's an opportunity to just be um, one little catalyst in, in a wide, in a broad sense. And I think it's ironic that my, my mother was born in Italy and my dad was Swiss at the, near the German border and his name was Zimmer and in translation Zimmer means room. And here uh, through 20 years, 25 years of being in the planning design field and then being asked to be CEO of, and start a hotel company, it was like, well, is that weird? <laughs> Here we are with the name The Room, <laughs> and we're designing hotels and resorts. Yeah. And so it's, it's all a part of when you hear Bob Zimmer say magic. Yeah. Because I didn't plan anything. <laughs> and I think the other part to this and why this is so important, yeah. for instance, for over almost 30 years, I've been on the advisory board of a group called the International Institute of Peace Through Tourism. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea, that, and I'm now on the board of a group called CREST, which is the Center for Responsible Sustainable Tourism out of Washington. And I give my time to those two organizations because of the force of tourism. And, and if, if the hoteliers of the world and the airline executives and the tour operators mm -hmm. realize the responsibility we have. And I, I just want to really focus on that for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Because once we are aware of, of really what is in this earth and those that have come before us, we should develop respect and a commitment, which is really responsibility, to remember. Mm -hmm. And I break the word apart, to remember, to remember how to be a part of a conscious divine humanity. And this is the key to the work, whatever we do, yeah. whatever. The work you're doing is a prime example of, of this heart song that's within you to disseminate information that can shift the members of this planet of this and planet. the universe. Ab absolutely. Because you clearly work and, on a and universal remember, level. Absolutely. And, you know, on this day that was so special for me in uh, Hawaii on the uh, Harmonic Convergence of 87, was really, uh, I had been doing some reading on the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Santa Fe and I started looking at the ancient uh, stories the mythology and legends of the Hopi mm -hmm. and then working in Nepal and Bali and India I saw a pattern of the same story of, of this time and this gateway of 2012 and it is not by the way the end of the world <laughs> it is the beginning if we we have choices to make in that so 
the whole guiding principle of Zimmern Associates and you know uh, SBD Studio and and our team and and what Dolores does is about this consciousness. Mm -hmm. And one other thing you asked me about, Lilu, and that is um, as as an example of um, that I, I know from your work and how you. Uh, jump the cliff when <laughs> you, your departure from your, your business that you were in is that looking at the hologram in this way, for instance, what I realized in the downturn of the economy from 2008 till just really now it's beginning to shift, that we had to look at a new way to be even deeper. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Dolores and I, as an example, formed kind of a, 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 a new co, a new company called Group 8. And in Group 8, there's a founder of a, a company called Enriching Media, Corey Smith, who is in digital media. And Tom Eddington, who was an international coach and mentor and organizational uh, designer, brilliant man, both of them. And part of our concept as we look at Papillon, which we'll talk about, or in Spiritu Destinations, is to create a very strong flow on the internet of workshops we do, of bringing in global leaders to uh, disseminate information as we build not only our, our, uh, our client base, but to put out this message of integrative medicine, holistic medicine, uh, 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 reciprocal money, funding, music, art, how to be a father, mother. In other words, how do we create this consciousness of being truly human again and start a way back on how to be in this world if we want to be sustainable mm -hmm. as, as a humanity. So mm. this is very much integrated with yeah. design, planning, how you create sacred spaces, the use of color and light, and how sound is a major element now. Yeah. And we, we have, working with a wonderful man called, it's called the sound. And this, this sound is, is a vibrational tool of healing too. So it's, it's really an amazing way and it's what keeps this, I think, uh, very special. And, yeah. my, and our passion. Yeah, definitely. You're so passionate about all this. But this is, you call all of that sustainable development. Yes. So it's not just in our homes, it's really... It's, 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 it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's how we choose to live. And the word sustainable, frankly, has been, it's become a buzzword. Yeah. And so if we really look at the word, I love breaking words apart, mm -hmm. sustain, you know, sustain life. And that, that means it's just not about leads, green design, it's much deeper because it affects all of the parts to the whole. So it's, it's a much deeper interpretation of the word sustainable. Mm -hmm. And we're looking, frankly, for new ways to have the language really state what these, these important times are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but would you say with that, all with those uh, sites uh, everywhere, you're kind of activating what some people call the grid? Yes. You're part of that. Well, Do you feel you're part of this huge plan? Very much so. I, I've been blessed, frankly, with a uh, uh, time that we did, uh, we studied with uh, Sander Ingerman, who you interviewed, yeah, who's uh, uh, one of the founders of the Shamanic Institute, along with Michael Horner. And what, what really she opened me up to was to look at the unseen world in a deeper way. Mm. And when I go into, especially uh, buildings that are, uh, I think people forget that when you're doing a building or you're building it, whether it's a thousand years old or it carries energy because we are electromagnetic, our spine, our, we are electromagnetic energy. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking at some of these buildings, uh, I'm going to tell a secret here now to you, is that I look at 
the energy of what has been there. And sometimes buildings have been um, degraded. There's traumatized. Trauma, the, the, the traumatized. Stones retain them. Yeah, and, and the, they the retain earth. that. Yeah. And you can, there was a project that uh, was in Peru that had some energy that was, was not good. And so at night I'd get up at dawn earlier when people weren't around and I just um, asked the spirit of that place to leave and that energy because it was left over from people. So one of the things we do when we're designing and building now, developing, I'll ask that all, any argument that anyone has with the contractor or subs, they leave the building and go outside and have that, in a sense, magic of conflict. Mm -hmm. Not to have that anger there. Mm -hmm. We were blessed with doing a project for uh, Oprah Winfrey in Telluride. Mm -hmm. She has sold that house now, but we had a rule with the contractor uh, be, never to have loud music, blaring music, drinking, uh, cussing, or, or, or holding arguments because it does, it's alive. Yeah. You know, there's emotional abuse that occurs and we try to have this buildings uh, represent a new energy. So I love restoration work. Yeah, and how do people respond? Your teams, the construction worker, because I, they I think, change, right? Country yeah, to country. Oh yeah, country to country. You know, a lot of the work we frankly do, kind of very quietly, because a lot of people do not understand it, and I don't want to challenge their beliefs. I can only know what I see and feel, and what our team sees and feels on the land. When, <coughs> when I was working with John Suarez for Orient Express in, um, the, uh, in Peru, we did this eco lodge in the Grand Canyon of Peru, uh, where the, it's called the Valley of the Condors, Colca. And when we were looking at the villages around, uh, we found this shaman's cave mm -hmm. with petroglyphs on it. And, um, we went inside just to be still and listen what this land wanted. And as we were just being still, if you've been to Peru, they have the most incredible hummingbirds. Now we're used to very small hummingbirds. There, they're 10 inches, Whoa. you know, they're, they're unbelievable. And this hummingbird came up just like a foot from me and just looked right into my eyes and heart, hovered there and left. Well, that was not an accident mm -hmm. because the hummingbird is, is the pollinator like bees are. And the message was, listen, be cautious because you're working on special places. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we went to the village and asked this 70 year old shaman woman, a wonderful lady, to do a blessing on the land that we were building and renovating. It was an old... And to have uh, permission to, yeah, I guess. And ask, that's exactly it. Mm. To go with respect. Yeah. You don't, it's not a matter that this is a, a pagan way or an indigenous. This is about just respecting those that went before. Mm -hmm. and, and studying what, what Sandra gave me was, remember all our ancestors that have gone before us because they understood the natural world. We got detached from it. So this is something that we try to, then when we leave a building, we do a blessing with the team. Mm -hmm. For instance, when I was doing the end of the Anasazi here in Santa Fe, when we developed it and ran it for three years, wow, we, we, um, we, we blessed it because it, it housed the New Mexico State Prison Department. Uh, many in the eight, seven, late 70s and 80s. And we did restore it, we took the shell down, but there was some very, energy was strange. Mm -hmm. So we had a priest come, a rabbi and a, a Sikh holy person, and we did a blessing of the building and, and uh, planted prayers in the foundation 
because there was a lot of energy of um, violence in this area because yeah. of the conflict between First Nation people and the original uh, Spanish and the Anglo coming in. So we try to honor that and it really, really helped. And when we left, we had a ceremony up on the third floor in this Sipapu Kiva skylight where we all put our handprints in up on the this Sipapu uh, skylight so that we would not only bring our energy there but those that came after us would remember that we really tried to create something special so it's it's just a part of I'll be honest with you the lessons learned yeah. how do you how, how would you describe what you're actually doing oh my <laughs> I, How does uh, it feel to your heart? What is it? What is it exactly that you're doing here in those different sites and places? I think that's a, a, a better way to put this because um, what's really happening? I come there? humbly because there's so much specialness of these places, and where we tap into energy that has been. Um, circumvented or suppressed, we gather to help release that old energy to allow the original energy to flow through. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people will say, what are you talking about, Bob? And the reality, if we look at our own body mm -hmm. and what Oriental Medicine has showed us, we have power points, as it's known as acupuncture points, in our body and I found through my travels and being at a place like in Cusco I'm sorry at Machu Picchu where Machu Picchu is is like a a needle in the ground like an acupuncture point and what's really interesting out in Feng Shui when you have a river which is the Orumbumba the sacred river that runs around Machu Picchu it's on three sides and that in Chinese um, uh, geometry is like this is a special place mm -hmm. and so this is why they put the ancient city of Machu Picchu there mm -hmm. and it kept secret until 1927 because the 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 shamans or priests of the pre-Inca and Inca did not want the Western world to find this because it was so powerful. And so... And we probably th would not this, have respected it anyway. Yeah. And you know, it's how we respect water. Uh, as an example, in our system, we are well over 90% water. Secondly, we're... we're 90%? We, yeah. yeah. As I'm we sorry, 85. 70 probably yeah. in, since... And, and what, what's happened, Lilu, is that it is the lifeline, the blood is our lifeline, so is water. Yeah. Well, what is the lifeblood of the earth? Water. Yeah. And we treat it like, you know, oh, we can degrade it and then we got to filter it and we've got to, well, th this is wrong. And so we, we really try to, that's why in our projects we, we're using bioremediation to regenerate water, What's to that? regenerate. It's taking a natural system through three or four ponds and gravel. So we're actually taking even wastewater, circulating it, and it, we polish it through this using bio plant material that actually remediates the toxins out of it. And you have water you can irrigate with, and frankly you could polish it enough to have it drinkable, but potable, but people aren't, we're not ready for that yet. But, but so you, re, you dynamize the water, you dynamize the site, you're, you're liberating some old energy, some new energy is coming in, you are clearly contributing to the uh, raising the vibration of this planet. Yes, and this is what was given to me in 1987. Yeah. And I hold it with great responsibility and uh, really a lot of passion. And I, gotta, I have to be very careful here about this because when I first realized how we wanted to work in the world and the shift that occurred is you can get on a soapbox with it 
and I got very passionate, which is, has its dark side too, mm -hmm. its double edge. Mm -hmm. And so what I've learned over the years is to just state it and in a sense let it go like a, a Buddhist because I can't change anything. The only thing I can do is change and, and do this. I can't, it's not about saving anything, it's about just being responsible and doing the best I can to communicate a new way of, of design, planning, architecture, uh, the Wisdom Institute we're going to have at Papillon in the Bahamas where we bring world leaders of, of spirituality, of medicine, of fiscal responsibility, of governance and government so that we're, all we're doing is, is dropping a small pebble in the pond of our life to be more conscious by taking our decision making to take all parts to the whole in design. It's like the fabrics that you saw. All of these are all natural, non-toxic, uh, using down timber mm. that, so that we're not, or if we have to use timber, that we're planting trees on where we work, literally, uh, so that we're reforesting because we've taken something out of the earth that we need to put back. So it's, it's kind of a, it's not complicated, that's what's amazing, because mm -hmm. it's just being conscious of a living world. Mm -hmm. so, so working consciously and from the heart, that's what I hear, Yes, is what you do. The, the basic real foundation of this is an open heart. Yeah. Because out of that open heart comes an awareness to look, to truly see people, and I use that word deeply, I see you, I see who you are. And if we did that as a president of a company or, or a, uh, a politician or a, uh, a doctor, and there are many doing this now, There's, but they don't, just like you are bringing a message through your work that there's thousands of people out there simply being heartfelt yeah. in their different disciplines because that's what's beautiful. You have a part to the whole, I have a part to the whole. And, and that is why I use that word, this is holistic and it is a hologram. And, and that's what I realized and that's why I left this wonderful company called Rosewood because I wanted to bring this out in a deeper way mm -hmm. and also be, um, you know, do workshops. Uh, I've talked at Cornell to the MBA program. I, I've tried to create, um, just from my experience, mm -hmm. not saying, oh, I know better or I'm on a soapbox. It's, it's how we choose because we're, and now we're seeing this incredible time of the perfect storm, as I call it. <laughs> when you look at the body of the economy, mm -hmm. what's happened, the body of the earth, mm -hmm. environmentally what's happened, whether it's global warming or the BP spill in the, in the Gulf, or seeing what's happening to the species or the rainforest, it's so short-sighted. Because what they're doing is decision-making is based on what I can, what I can earn now mm -hmm. and what my stockholders need to have for return and it's stripping the earth and it's real. Mm -hmm. And so this perfect storm is a wonderful way for people to realize, to become, well, wait a minute, is this really working? Mm -hmm. And to become conscious. And to become whole again yeah. too. And I think that, just to go back to that open heart, yeah. because that is it. Yeah. You know, I, I was... Can we feel it, this man is yeah. talking well, with an you. open heart and from the heart? And this, you shouldn't this have is, to this man, but Bob, yeah, you yeah. are definitely thank coming you. with an open heart. And you know, I, I remember a, a story I'd like to share with you, Lilu. Uh, I was in Geneva at the 9-11 uh, and the, what happened in, in New York that shook up the entire world. And um, I uh, was, my, my wife was working in Brussels on a project with a couple of our staff. 
and I, we could none of us could fly home. And I called and had them come to Geneva, where we were working on a Mandarin International Hotel. And I only use this as an example of remembering the gifts we can give people. So we finally were able to get back on an aircraft, seven days, I think it was six days, to get back home and to the studio here. And we had a, a, a driver, a taxi driver, that was taking us to the airport that was Muslim mm -hmm. from the Middle East. And he was absolutely petrified and in fear what was going to happen to uh, the Islamic community mm -hmm. that weren't radical. I mean, he was fearful. And I, I was with our group of our studio people here, and I got out of the car, and I had talked to him about what was going on, that there's, this is, there's extremism everywhere in the world. But I went up to him and I gave him the biggest hug I could give him. <laughs> and he started crying. Mm. And all I wanted to do was touch his heart. Mm -hmm. Because if we have an open heart, people will feel and see who we are. Even if they don't, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Because all we've tried to do is say, this is how I choose to live. And that is a new way. Mm -hmm. That is an old way, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of our, I mean, our Pueblo people here were an incredible example, the First Nation people of northern New Mexico, who absolutely opened up their heart in hospitality to the, um, the uh, Hispanic conquistador. Mm -hmm. But they got so, in a sense, enslaved that they had to revolt because freedom is how they lived. And they gave them so many gifts, you know, from corn and it, just amazing gifts. And then, and this is the lesson, are we going to learn, mm -hmm. you know, this, this, to remember this new way. How are we going to be human again? Yeah. So that, that's... And that's a choice we have to do each day. Each day. Each day. Not choose fear, but choose. Because yeah. it is easy to fall in the fear trap, too. Absolutely. Considering because everything it's everywhere. that is happening. Yes. And, you know, it's much of our economy and much of our the politics of our world everywhere is based on a fear principle mm -hmm. because it's about control. Mm -hmm. And this fear principle is what 10, 15 years from now, if we don't shift it, will mean the non-sustainability of our world. So let's have a choice here. How are we going to choose to live? And, and so this work is all we can do to say with, with an open heart, here is how we think is just one way to work. Doesn't mean this is perfect, and it isn't, because there is so much to remember. But all we can do is put this out, and if people all of a sudden see it, yeah. then it's, it, can, it can shift. Yeah. And my travels live all over the world. I have met, just as you're doing, I want to say this, just as you're doing, is identifying and seeing, my God, there's a huge movement here occurring globally. Yeah. And it's really the same story, you know, that people are realizing. So it's, it's just, it's the juiciest time to be alive in this world. <laughs> if we don't get into the fear and just realize yeah. It is what it is, and we're seeing ups and downs, and it just if we don't tie into that. Yeah, and there are some things, it's okay not to understand everything intellectually yeah. that we do. I'm sure you made many decisions that didn't make sense on an intellectual level, I and your heart told you to do it, no? What was the craziest thing? You're just like, well, every time, or? <laughs> I think, I think uh, it's uh, one of the craziest things I've ever done, and it was strictly it was all intuition, you know, and then when you make that decision, you think, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> you know, what is, what is the fear? Uh, and, and you do get into it, and it's what I work on every day, 
And it's been a journey because I can drift back into the old way, like, why did I do this? But then what I, what I found in my life, like um, when I left Rosewood, yeah. this was a wonderful company and a wonderful job and it was very abundant for me. Mm -hmm. And I was married at the time and there was a realization everyone thought I was crazy leaving. And you know, and for a while I thought, what did I do here? I've lost my mind, mm -hmm. but I knew down deep that I had to do this. I had to. And, and it was also time I saw that the company had an executive that was from the hotel business per se. Uh, but I was, I'm a good midwife. I love birthing <laughs> and the process of birthing. But then uh, a gentleman took my role who I had hired, Atef Mankarios, who is a wonderful gentleman who came out of Four Seasons that became and was with Rosewood. I hired him and what I'm saying that for was I saw that this was the best thing I could do for the community I was in, but it was honestly scary. It was crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to people that are possibly in this situation right now and having to make a big life choice? I'm going to take a deep breath here. Mm. 